Hey guys, it's Corey from Laboratory again, and today I get to do a review on the Lowell's Got Mini by LF Objects. So I've been meaning to do this review for quite a while now. We've had this printer for about a month. We've been printing mostly with PLA. We've done a little bit with ABS now, but we're still mainly using PLA. The printer itself in the packaging came really nicely. Just had a heap of foam. You know, you could drop this thing off at probably the top of a building and it would still wouldn't be damaged. The frame itself is really, really sturdy. Compared to our other printer, which is half plastic, this thing is as solid as a rock. The filament holder is quite cool because it actually folds down. It will actually fold down back in here and slide inside. So if you've got a bigger roll that doesn't fit on here, you can have a separate stand to the side and this just tucks away. Or if you need to store it, it tucks away. Everything about it's really good. A lot of the parts you can 3D print. So I've already broken a part. This little one up here, that's just holds the filament into place. I snapped that, but I've just printed out another part with PLA and it's been working fine since and fitted straight in, which was really good. The bed itself is quite sturdy. So although the bed moves, it feels solid. A lot of the other printers that have a moving bed, you can feel it's got a bit of movement and play in it. But as you'll see with the detail of prints, this bed just does not move at all. I quite like the fact that the printer isn't overall that big. And also all the components are hidden really well inside the control box. A lot of printers you see with like an external control box or just wires hanging out. This one I can have on display or leave out and my desk isn't going to look like a total mess. Although it does at the moment. The Lulzbot Mini comes with its own version of Cura which has presets of a lot of filaments. It actually has a preset with this eSun filament we're currently using. You can make your own presets or just customise any preset if you need to which is quite good. Unlike other closed source printers, say for example, the Upbox, which I think they've just made theirs open source now. The hex head extruder has been quite good. We've been using, I think it's a Mark VI extruder or other printer. This one, I have yet to have a clog. The other one being a Delta style, we, did, we do get clogs quite often and that's mainly due to cooling of the Bowden pipe heatsink, if that's what you call it. Uh, this one seems to just work perfectly. Literally haven't had a single clog yet. So what do I like about this printer? Uh, for starters, I like the fact that it has auto bed leveling. Uh, that just takes the headache out of a lot of you know, the calibration. You just pretty much click go and you know it's going to work and it's going to be a reliable print. I also like the fact of how strong it's made. A lot of printers are plastic or a thin type of metal. You know, screws aren't the right size and just things move. This thing, you know, me shaking it, the only thing that's wobbling is this. Everything else, it just feels as solid as a rock. I also really like the PEI sheet on the, the bed. So it is a glass bed, but it has got a PEI sheet on top and things just stick to it perfectly. Our old printer was just a aluminium heat bed, which we then had to cope with painter's tape and use hairspray. This thing, I just say print, go, and it sticks amazing. I also like the idea of the cleaning system. It's a good idea in theory but there's probably some improvements that can be made. I have seen another cleaning system work more efficiently. I really like the idea that a lot of these components are 3D printed so if they break that you can just interchange them and print one of your own. You don't have to wait for another part to come out or the costs involved of getting another part. I like the fact that everything's contained inside this control board over here. I like the fact that the printer can print multiple filaments you're not restricted to other brand printers where you've got to use their brand of filament. This is an open source printer. They do say try not to use carbon filaments as it can damage the nozzle. You can replace it with a stainless steel nozzle to overcome this, but without doing that, again, carbon filaments are a no-go. Now, what are some of the things I don't like? I don't like the fact with the cleaning system, I found the cleaning system quite unreliable. The felt seems to be able to be picked up by the hot end head and same as hot plastic and it seems to get stuck on the tip and when the auto bed goes to level the nozzle creates a closed circuit with these washers and if there's plastic or this felt it acts as a really good insulator and I've had cases where it looks to me like it just keeps on pressing down on this washer and I actually see the glass bed bend under the pressure. I've stopped the print because I know as soon as it's going to start it's just going to cut up my glass bed and leave marks so luckily I've been watching it, but that's probably the only major fault I would have with this printer in that if the auto bed leveling doesn't work right, it's a bad print. If you watch the auto bed leveling and make sure it works properly, which it's easy enough to tell if it's going to or not. I've just used tweezers and picked off a bit of 
the slag or felt, and then it works fine. Compared to other printers in this price range, it doesn't have an enclosed heat chamber, and same as it doesn't have a filter. So in printing ABS and other toxic filaments, you can't really use it at home or in an environment that can be exposed to people. I am thinking of building a mini enclosure out of a couple of IKEA coffee tables and basically bolting them together and covering them with some perspex and maybe putting a 12 volt fan on one side and a HEPA filter on the other just to force the air through. Hopefully this will also help with some warping issues with ABS as the chamber should be at a slightly higher temperature to what the normal temperatures around because of the heated print bed. Another thing I don't like is the lack of interface. There's no USB slot, there's no on-screen display. You have to have your computer plugged in the entire time. So if I go to plug my laptop in, load a file, start printing, my laptop is now tethered to this unit the entire time that it's printing. I can't plug it in and leave it and pull it away. It's you know, used by the printer, which can be annoying. If I'm trying to edit videos or want to search something in my room, I can't, my laptop's got to be plugged in the whole time. I have seen a product by Matta Controllers, which is basically a small tablet that can be mounted to the top, which has a USB out and can be directly plugged in and you can use this as a controller. I'm really contemplating on buying one just so I can have this as an independent printer and have my laptop free again. But that's probably a negative on it because one of those controllers, I believe is around 299 US. So it is a big cost to add onto the printer, which is already costly. Another thing I like about this printer is not only can it print three millimeter filaments, but it can also print 1.75 millimeter. In their manual, they do say to purchase the 1.75 millimeter extruder. You don't need to do this. You can just print pure 1.75 millimeter filament with a three millimeter hex head extruder, but you do need to change the settings inside of Cura just to obviously counteract the fact that there's a much smaller filament. It's still not as reliable as using the 1.75 millimeter extruder, but for the price you've got to pay to buy one, and if you've got leftover 1.75 millimeter from your old printer, you still can print with it. So this is a Pokeball that I've printed out today with the Logot Mini. It was printed out with a three millimeter white Esun PLA, printed out in multiple sizes. So the ball bits are in high detail, which is 0.1 millimeter layer heights. The stand was printed out in 0.2 millimeter layer height, which is the standard profile. Uh, I haven't sanded anything off of these. These are exactly how they came off. Um, you can see the detail. It's really good. When we go to sand this and primer it, it's probably going to be one or two coats since there's the layer lines are almost invisible, which is great. Now the stand I've left on the supports which the supports break away. Most of the time I can just break it away with my fingers. Sometimes I do need pliers, but it prints them out really well. Now the shell of the Pokeball I printed out with zero supports. So this concave shape was actually printed out like this and it just printed out with zero supports. And you can see from the inside, it's actually done it pretty well. You can see a little bit of drippage. If we go in close, can we see it? You can see a little bit of drippage just in the center there. But overall, it's really quite good. So this is the Lulzbot Mini in action. So I've just clicked print, and obviously it's starting to move. It'll just move over to the side here and start heating up to about 130, 140 degrees. Once it's reached its temperature, it will then commence the auto bed leveling process. It normally takes about a minute or so to heat up, but obviously through the amazing magical powers of videos, we can speed this process up a bit. So we're just about to get to 130, so any second now, there it goes. So the first thing it does is it starts retracting the filament and slowly making its way down just to allow the filament to come out a little bit easier. It then lowers down towards the cleaning pad, which then it will clean its head for five or so seconds, which is, it's okay. Um, I have seen ones that have worked a bit more like a wiper blade and that just works off literally like a windscreen wiper seal. So you can see here, it's just rubbing really tightly. And this is where the felt can sometimes get stuck on the bottom of the tip. Just looking at it, this time it looks quite clean. But if I had a dirty nozzle and it had a bit of plastic on there, it's quite likely to get stuck and caught. So it just goes down then and touches each corner of the heat bed on the conductive washers. Again, if I have the felt or something stuck on it, you'll see just the corner of the bed bend and bend and bend until it finally makes contact. 
this one's working quite good so as far as I can tell I shouldn't have to do anything more we should just be able to watch this and it should start going the first time I did use the printer the my favorite thing and my mate that was over at the time thought it was awesome too was literally the sound of that wee 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 it's a cool sound <laughs> printer but it does its job really well if you've got a tight budget this is probably not the printer for you you're probably better off buying one off China or off eBay and really customizing it because you could probably build one of these for a fraction of the cost and still get the quality but it is a lot of commitment of time and work to get a printer up to this standard for print quality I'd probably give this a 9 the only time I'm ever going to give something a 10 is when I can't see a single layer but for what it is this does really good quality prints for reliability, I'd give this a 9 as well. Again, as I was saying before, the only thing I don't like about it is the fact that the auto bed leveling can stuff up, and if that stuff's up, it can be a completely failed print, same as it can damage your heated print bed. 